Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us. We're glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. Today is the last Sunday of the Christian Church year, and again, we focus on the last things, reminding ourselves that Jesus is coming again, what he's going to give to us when he comes again, what we're going to have for all eternity, and realize that for all eternity, we'll have every reason to praise him forever and ever. We have a special service we're following. We begin with an opening prayer. Why don't we, let's rise. And let's pause for a moment for private meditation. We'll compose ourselves and then we'll begin with the prayer. And we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather together to worship you and hear your word. As we hear the scriptures today, send the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts to strengthen us in the one true faith so that we will be more sure of your love and the salvation you give us through your Son, Jesus. Lead us to look forward eagerly to Jesus' second coming. Keep us faithful to the point of death. And we'll join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. We read, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the hymn verses. And we'll continue by reading responsibly various passages from Scripture that talk about Jesus' second coming and what will happen in eternity. If you're following in the bulletin, we're on page four. But our citizenship is in heaven. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. 
For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. And the dead in Christ will rise first. He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Believe in the Lord Jesus. You guide me with your counsel. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing. How lovely is your dwelling place. My soul yearns, even faints. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? They 
Therefore, they are before the throne of God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. And so we will be with the Lord forever. will rise. We'll continue with the prayer for the day. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the devil and freed us from our sins. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope and eagerness to that day when you will return again in glory, and every creature in heaven and earth will acclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. Please send your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts so that we may remain faithful to you always and be with you forever in the glories of heaven. We pray this trusting in you, our only Savior, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Our Gospel lesson today is written in the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. We start with the first verse. We do not know when Jesus will come again. Therefore, we must be ready at all times. Jesus is speaking and says, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. So far, our scripture lessons. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The words of God will consider in this the last Sunday of the Christian Church here are written in the Revelation of St. John. We start in chapter 1, we'll in the beginning, or in the middle of verse 4. Grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of our Savior Jesus, who is coming back to take us to be with him forever, dear friends in Christ. So, why is heaven going to be such a wonderful place? Or what is there in heaven that you think you're going to enjoy the most? What is it that you're looking forward to the most? How about the fact that in heaven everything is perfect? Nothing ever goes wrong. No one will ever hurt us again. In heaven we will be perfect. We will never mess up again or make mistakes. We'll never grow old. We'll never have troubles and hardships. In heaven we will never sin again. And because we never sin, we're never ever going to have to deal with the shame and the guilt that sometimes plagues us for, throughout our lives. Because we never sin, we'll never ever feel a bad about anything that we have done. In heaven, we'll be with all believers and we'll never be separated again. You ever do that? You think about those who have left us and you know, we miss them sometimes. And we wish they were still with us and they're not. But when we can remember they're in heaven, one day we'll be in heaven and one day we will be with them again. In heaven we will be with the Lord. We will be in his glorious presence. And the Bible talks about what the Lord is going to do for us when we're with him. Jesus says, It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve and will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. What an incredible picture. In heaven, Jesus is going to be waiting on us. He's going to be focusing on us, using his almighty power to do whatever it takes so that we can have the greatest joy and the greatest happiness. And I'm sure there's other things that maybe cross your mind when you think about heaven. One more that we'd like to focus on now, and it has to do with the word forever. Hmm? The glory, the bliss, the happiness, the joy, the pleasure in heaven goes on forever and ever. And that's one of the things we sometimes struggle with in this world. Because everything ends. Nothing lasts forever. I mean, how many times has it happened? Maybe you're at somebody's house and you tell the kids it's time to go and no, we're not done playing yet. Or it gets to be in the evening and it's time for bed. No, we want to we wanna play longer. We're not done with our game yet or this show isn't finished. See? 
I mean, ever have that happen where you're on vacation, having a, a really good time, and then you realize, we got to leave tomorrow. Hmm? This is so neat, why can't it last? Why does it have to end? One of the, the hardest things in life is saying goodbye to people, especially those who have died. And it's a sad, harsh reality. Every relationship we have in this life is going to end one day. Either they're going to die or I'm going to die. Hmm? And, and it hurts, eh? It hurts to say goodbye. You think of people who have, have left us and how much we miss them, eh? How many times has it happened that a, that a husband or a wife, they've, they've lost their spouse and they never, ever stop missing them? See, in heaven, we will never be separated again. We'll be together with all believers forever and ever. Forever and ever, we will be in the Lord's presence. And forever and ever, the Lord is going to focus on us, wait on us. Forever and ever, he will give us joy and pleasure that's beyond anything we could imagine or have in this life. Hmm? And it's going to be so wonderful, it's going to be so incredible that we will never get bored, we will never ever tire of all the wonderful things that the Lord will be giving to us. And it's going to be so wonderful, so great, that we'll never ever tire of giving the Lord the praise that he deserves. Hmm? In heaven, forever and ever, we'll enjoy happiness and bliss. And forever and ever, we will praise the Lord. And we'll keep that thought in mind as we look at these words of God before us today. The greatest thing that can ever happen is for the Lord to come and take us to be with him. Hmm? Sad to say not everyone looks at it that way, right? Some people are terrified at the thought of dying. Some people are afraid. They don't want to think about the fact that the world might come to an end. They don't want to admit themselves the truth that it is going to come to an end. Uh, sometimes it's, again, because, because they're afraid. They have consciences and they can look back at their lives and see the mistakes that they've made and they wonder what's going to happen when the world comes to an end. I mean, did, you ever, did that ever happen to you when you were you were little, maybe you were naughty and, and maybe mom got frustrated and sent you to your room and said, you wait till your father gets home. Or maybe you're at daycare and being naughty and the daycare worker said, well, you just wait till your parents come and pick you up. And then maybe you started to think, oh, what is going to happen when they get here? Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get spanked? The fear of the punishment that might be coming made us feel pretty uneasy. And there's people in this world who are like that. The fear of the punishment that's going to be coming or that they're afraid is going to be coming makes them uneasy about dying, makes them not want to think about the end of the world. What's going to happen? Hmm? Is Jesus going to punish me? Is he going to send me to hell? And again, they have natural knowledge, and the thought of hell makes them feel uncomfortable. And what do they do? Oh, they try to downplay it sometimes. You ever hear people say things like that? They try to convince themselves that there is no such place as hell. Or if they admit that there's a hell, they try to downplay it and say, well, it's, um, no loving God would ever really send anybody there any, anyway. Or they downplay and say, well, it really can't be all that bad. Or maybe they even start to make jokes about it. Oh, we're going to need air conditioning down there. And uh, oh, we'll be with all our friends. Or even twisting things enough to try to convince themselves, you know, hell won't be that bad. In fact, you know, maybe we'll even have more fun there than those people in heaven will have. And what's the truth? The truth of the matter is, one, hell does exist, two, God does send people there, and three, it is a place of agony and torment. It's horrible. You don't want to be there. And the Bible uses some pretty clear and graphic language to, to talk about hell, and we don't like to focus on it, we don't like to think about it, but it's good to, 
to be clear about it. Now, the Bible talks about, again, a place of torment and ache, and he cut off from God in his love. The book of Isaiah talks about the worms crawling on us. You ever do that? You find a, a dead animal on the side of the road, and you look, and then you see the maggots crawling on it, eating away at it. The picture of the, the worms crawling on a, on a body in hell, eating at it, but never ending. Hmm? Or you think of the burning bush, burning and never burning up, people in hell burning and never burning up, in agony forever and ever. And again, you don't like to think about it. You think, I don't want there to be a place like that, and I don't want to think about a God who's going to send people there. But the Bible is clear. It's there, and people will be there. And we think, Lord, please help me. Hmm? It's good to be clear about hell because it makes us realize how wonderful it is that Jesus has saved us from hell. It makes us appreciate all the more the grace of God that moved him to send a Savior to take care of our sins. Note what we're told here. We give praise to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. You think again of what the Lord Jesus did so that we will never be in hell. Shedding his blood, going to the cross. And when we think of him suffering on the cross, it's easy to think of the nails through his hands and his feet, the crown of thorns, the whipping, the beatings. But we know there's something worse than that, right? Those words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hmm? People cut off from God's goodness in hell, separated from him under his wrath and anger. Jesus on the cross cut off from his father with his father's wrath and anger directed at him for the sins that we had committed. And you think, what should a certain sin bring to somebody in hell? Well, that's what was put on Jesus. Or you think of a man oh, in the, or a woman and their sins and what they will suffer in hell, all of that transferred and put on Jesus for every single sin, for every single person who will exist. And then we remember, it is finished letting us know that it has been taken care of. Sins have been paid for. Sins have been forgiven because of what Jesus has done. And we have that comfort, that confidence. Eh? I don't have to be afraid of God. I don't have to be afraid to die. I don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen to me on Judgment Day. Because I know that through Jesus I'm righteous in God's sight. God looks at me and sees I'm just what he wants. And while I'm in this world, I have that confidence that the Lord is going to be with me and guide me. He's going to love me. He's going to bless me. He's going to cause all things to work for my good. And the writer here, John, talks about two other things, two other blessings we have. He says, to him who loved us and freed us from our sins by his own blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. Now, we count among our blessings living in the United States, right? To be citizens of this country where we have freedom, we have a pretty good measure of safety, we have a high standard of living, we get to enjoy many blessings. I'm glad I'm part of this earthly kingdom, the country we call the United States. But better by far is to be part of God's spiritual kingdom, where we have blessings that are better by far. Again, to be sure of his love. In this, in this country, I don't know if my president even knows who I am. Sometimes I'm not happy with him, sometimes I'm not happy with Congress. But my king in the spiritual kingdom, Jesus, knows me, loves me, always working for my good, using his almighty power to engineer events, everything in this world, to make sure that everything always ends up being a blessing for me. What a wonderful thing to have that privilege, to be part of that kingdom. And he allows me to have a say in the way that he rules the world. Nobody says. He says we're priests. In the Old Testament, it was the priests who had the privilege of going to God directly. The people had to go through the priest to offer their sacrifices to God. Well, we're all priests. 
and that we all can go to God directly because of what Jesus has done. That's part of praying in Jesus' name. That we can go to him and know that he listens. That he does take our prayers into account. And that he does answer them in the way that he knows is best. And we think again of the Lord Jesus running the world and he allows us to pray to him and to give him our thoughts, our requests, and he actually listens to them. He lets us have an influence with the way he rules the world. The privilege we have in being a kingdom and priest. And it's a blessing to know that the Lord is ruling the world, that he is in charge of all things. And we get frustrated sometimes, sometimes we're angry, sometimes we feel pretty hurt because of the things that go on in this world, because of the things that people sometimes do. The effects of sin touch our lives, and it's not always very pleasant. Sometimes we hurt, sometimes our hearts are broken. And yet we know the Lord is in control. He loves me. He's going to strengthen me. He's going to see me through all things, work all things for my good, and when the time is right, he's going to put an end to all the effects of sin in my life. And when the time is right, he's going to put an end to the effects of sin once and for all. And that happens when he comes again. Again, we're cold. Look, he is coming on the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Jesus is going to come again. And when he does, everyone is going to see him. Be kind of needed. Be like witnessing the miracle of omnipresence right before our very eyes. That no matter where we are, we'll look up and there he will be. We'll all see him, we're told, even those who pierced him. Even those who rejected him. Even those who killed him, they're all going to have to stand before him. And we're told all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. In contrast to people who are part of his heavenly kingdom, the peoples of the earth, the unbelievers, they're going to mourn. This world is all they know, and what's in this world is all they have. And when this ends, they have no blessing left. They'll mourn because of that. When they see Jesus, they're going to mourn because they're going to realize they were wrong. And when they see him, they're going to mourn because they will be cut off from him, separated for all eternity. And that in itself is a reminder for us to be doing what we're doing. That the work we have been given is the most important work of all. To do everything we can, to work together with our talents and our time, to make sure that God's word is spread throughout the world so that more and more people can be told the news, Jesus died for your sins. He's won eternal life for you. He gives this to you as a free gift. Believe in him and you have life that will last forever. We think of our own lives. The most important thing we do in our own lives is to take care of our relationship with God. And we think of our children, our grandchildren. The single most important thing we do for them is to make sure that they too know the Lord Jesus so that they too will be in heaven. We think again of the promises that the Lord has given to us and that he's going to come back again. And he tells us what's going to happen. That, well, if, he, if we've died before he comes back, he's going to raise us. He's going to change our bodies, make them perfect. They'll be like his glorious body. Body and soul, he will take us to be with him and we will be in heaven the greatest place of all. And again we ask, is what is going to make heaven so wonderful and so great? And we talked about some of the things, and the truth is we'll probably never really understand and realize how great heaven is until we get there. But in the meantime, the Lord has told us some things, things to whet our appetite, so to speak, to urge us, to stay faithful no matter what we have to go through, to give us comfort and hope and strength regardless of how difficult things get in this life, knowing the best is coming and it's going to be forever and ever. Forever and ever we will be with all those who have gone to heaven before us. We'll never be separated from them again. Forever and ever we will be with the Lord in his glorious presence. Forever and ever, Jesus will wait on us 
using his power to give us the greatest blessings, the greatest pleasure and happiness of all. And it's, as we said, it's going to be so wonderful that we will never ever tire of enjoying those blessings and will never tire of giving him the glory that he deserves for what he will give us to enjoy forever and ever. Amen. You may remain seated. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And we'll continue with one more scripture lesson. We'll read selected verses from 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter, reminding us again of what's going to happen when Jesus comes and raises all the dead. And knowing this, knowing what we will have in eternity, encourage us to stand firm and to give ourselves to God's work. And again, we read responsibly. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. But each in his own turn, Christ the first fruits. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. <laughs> Where, O oh, death, is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. So far, our scripture lesson will continue with the offering, and as we gather it, we'll sing the hymn verses.
will rise. And we'll continue with the responsive prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, at the Father's appointed time, you came down from heaven to gain forgiveness for our sins and secure eternal life in heaven for us. Glorious Savior, send your Spirit to work in our hearts so that we will always recognize and confess our sins and put our trust in you as our Savior. Precious Savior, you have told us that you will come again to take us to heaven. We praise you, dear Jesus, for the promise of your second coming. Lord, you have told us that no one knows the time of your second coming. Lord, you have told us how wonderful heaven will be. Sin and all its effects will be gone. There will be no more sickness, sorrow, or sadness, no more guilt or shame, no more pain or death. You will change our bodies and make them perfect and glorious. You will give us perfect joy and everlasting happiness. We will be with all believers, and best of all, we will forever and ever be with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, when you come again, you will judge the living and the dead. Only those who trust in you as the Son of God and Savior from sin will have eternal life in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God and our dear Savior, we long to be with you in the perfect glory of heaven. And so we pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We offer a special prayer today, Lord, for Sally Kopecki's nephew, Ace, who has been suffering from seizures and has been hospitalized recently. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over this young lad, and if it's your will, uh, help his health to improve, help the doctors and nurses to know what to do so they can stop the seizures. Please, Lord, continue to watch over him and his family and loved ones. Help him to know, even at a young age, that you love him and are with him, and that you will work through all things, even this, to bring blessings to his life. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that you will hear, and with the faith he will respond for our welfare. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise and we will pray. O oh Lord, our gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of gathering with our fellow Christians for worship this day. May the message from your word which we heard today strengthen our faith and better equip us to serve you in this life. Please keep us safe as we journey through this life and bring us together for worship again. Most of all, preserve us in the true faith so that we may be with all believers in your glorious presence for all eternity. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. Jesus says, be faithful even to the point of death. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let's stay standing for the final hymn verse. Please be seated. Good morning once again, and thank you for being with us. A special welcome to those of our visitors with us today. We pray God's word you heard would be a blessing for your life. Please sign our guest book, and if you'd like, we'll give you a visitor packet that'll give you more information about our church. A couple of things we'd like to announce, but first of all, uh, PTO is looking for help with our concession stand for the girls' YMCA basketball tournament December 4th and 5th. We'll be having games played here. We also need ticket takers and help running the scoreboard and referees. There's a shine-up sheet in the back of the church. If you have any questions about this, you can talk to um, Mr. Aaron Jenstead. Going through the week, uh, this afternoon, uh, our senior turkey dinner, always one of the highlights of our year. Again, if you're over 65 and didn't get an invitation, please let us know. Uh, we may not have realized you were, you were over 65, but you are welcome. Please let us know. We hope you can join us for that. And our campus students, we're going to meet at the Parsonage at 6.30, have a short devotion, and then we will be going bowling. Going on through the week, Board of Elders on Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to take things off. The, the Women's Bible Study will not meet Wednesday morning. Uh, the, the other morning Bible study, the 10.30 study is canceled. And then both confirmation classes also will not be meeting that night. And I believe, I think I have a misprint here, choir, I believe is at 7.00. Right? Okay, 7 is not 6.30, but 7 o'clock for choir practice. And then, of course, Thursday morning, uh, our special Thanksgiving service. We hope you can join us for that. And then a week from today, classes are, are canceled because of the holiday weekend. Uh, we're going to decorate the church on November 30th. There's new Christmas cards available. And Christmas for Kids is coming in about three weeks. And uh, we have a sign-up sheet if you'd like to help in some way. And then... We, we also have a sign-up sheet for our own kids. It's easier for us if you just write their names down. But there are also some take-home invites and registration slips. If you know somebody in the neighborhood or an acquaintance and they'd like to come, you can give that to them. Uh, Christmas for Candlelight coming up on 
the th oh, that should be the 14th, I believe. And you see the other announcements on page 16. Those are what we'd like to share with you today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Good morning, and God bless you.